So today, let's take a look at this GE refrigerator board. This belongs to a co-worker, and part number is 200D9742G001. I'll also put the refrigerator model number up here on the screen. These boards are not very expensive, but since Thanksgiving is right around the corner and his fridge went out, and a board's going to be at least a week or so. He just asked if we would take a look at it and see if it's something simple with the board that may make it worth repairing. Just looking over the board, nothing's really obvious. These resistors do have brown around them, but they are two ohm power resistors, probably on the motor circuit. And they're not open. They are two ohm, so I think they're fine. If we look at the back, we do see the conformal coating and Boy, it's a, a lot of conformal coating on here for sure. We do see that it's brown around here just from the heat. But I believe as long as the resistors are not burned and the solder joints look good, I think all that's fine. Um, we do have a lot of other components on here. This lower voltage that I'm a little concerned about. The processor being the main one. But we have other chips as well. I would think the main culprit on the board like this is going to be this switcher chip. On an up-close picture here, you can see this switcher chip is a 5M0365R. And I'll put a little bit of information up here on the screen when I'm editing the video. So you can see a little bit of, about the switcher chip. And the reason I believe it's the switcher is the way it failed. So the owner said they had a power blip or lost power when it came back on. And the refrigerator display did not come on. Just the light bulb inside the refrigerator was on. So a lot of times when the power flickers and power on a board don't come on if it's a little switch mode or switcher chip like this typically something got damaged with this little switcher chip or the circuit i'm going to put 120 volts on this board to see what's going on and, and hopefully be better indication for troubleshooting i traced all this through and you can tell the way the input comes in we got some input protection here on the top left we have a fuse we have y2 rated caps two of those we have an mov we have an X2 rated cap and it's big inductor. That of course goes through four diodes and that's on the back side of the board. There's some little SMD diodes there and then it goes through the large cap to give us like our DC bus here that does feed through a current limiting resistor here just to the right of this large cap and it goes to the switcher chip that we see below the cap on the heat sink. So I do know that the power comes in as marked on this terminal and the neutral. When I trace it, it goes through that green resistor up above and then goes through the bridge rectifier. And whenever you're using mains voltage, you have to be careful. If you don't know what you're doing with mains voltage, then simply don't do it. I am using a little small yellow jumper wire here on purpose. It's just another fuse link if something did go wrong or something shorted even though nothing shows shorted on the board when I put my own meter across it. You still never know with a switcher failure like this. So I also have a fuse protection on my little quick test, little distribution box here. So when I close this, it'll be fuse protected as well as a little fine yellow wire if something happens. And always wear your PPE because you never know what could happen on a board. I actually do smell something getting hot on the board. I'm gonna get my meter well yeah so a lot of times these uh switchers fail more catastrophic and it did that little cap had decided it had enough of being over voltage and decided to let go so one thing we see that's a pretty good pop for a little tiny cap so think about the one right here above it the larger cap and then of course one like i'll show up here on the screen a really large cap like i've used in an older video before it really makes you think just how catastrophic they can fail and pop because this one was loud enough, so always wear safety glasses. Protect those eyes 100%. Here's the little cover from the capacitor. It's a little 25 volt, 22 microfarad. So yeah, tiny little guy, but that was a pretty good pop, especially right in front of you like that. So this switcher is definitely bad. I don't even have to put a uh, meter on it. It definitely um, it let the output overvolt, which definitely took out the capacitor. And I would say instead of going from like a 90% chance of fixing it with a switcher, when it fails in that manner, it's probably 90% chance it took a lot of other things out. So usually we do get kind of lucky, but this time it's going to be difficult. 
We hope it's not a lot of these small components on this side of the board affected, but like these here are little motor driver chips, and we have some little, looks like TTL chips or inverter chips, and the processor might be okay. It might be protected by the 5 volt regulator side. I'm just going to go ahead and clean up the area around this cap. I do have a 22 microfarad 25 volt cap to use and I have a couple a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and order this switcher but I can go ahead and remove the component and go ahead and have that done. They don't make this easy to get to but I can unscrew the switcher from the heatsink. Get that screw. There we go. We'll turn this over and I have off camera taken a little small screwdriver and scraped off the very tips of these solder joints to try to get some of the epoxy conformal coating off so they'll just heat up a lot better and desolder. So let's just use some low temp or low melt solder and let's just add some of this and mix it in to show you how well it does work. Even when you got one with multiple pins like this, we'll just, a little bit does go a long way, but I'm gonna puddle up a good little bit here so you can see how good it keeps flowing. And this low melt solder will give us several seconds to work with the pins, unlike leaded solder or regular unleaded solder. And it's starting to wiggle and there you go. The, the solder is still liquefied and there's the switcher chip. It did leave one pin though, I'll go back and get that. I'm going to put a little bit here on these two pins for the capacitor and you see we got it puddling and we got several seconds here to grab the pliers and it pulls right out so very handy let's go ahead and get that other pin there it is just like so I'm just going to use my little solder sucker to get up some of the leftover low temp, the leftover solder, start cleaning it up. The rest of it we can just get up with a wick. This is just my regular like through hole solder sucker. Just using it to get up a little bit of the excess. Then I'm gonna take my flux, put it on here, then I'll get my, my wick or my braid. We'll just start wicking this up. Time for a little bit of alcohol. We'll clean the board up. We'll start off with a Q-tip. Get us a wipe here and then we'll get the brush out, clean it up even better. We got time before the parts get here anyway. This is what our board looks like with the chip removed. These four pads here and these two pads here for the capacitor. I've also checked this diode. It looks like a little transistor, but there's a diode across here and it does check good. I am worried about this little isolator on the feedback circuit or optocoupler as well. Some of this stuff right here, we have a diode and five volt regulator. Hopefully that's okay because everything on this side of the five volt regulator is okay, but we do know that a lot of these components are going to get the 13 volts or whatever that switcher typically puts out. Shine the light. Yep, we're clear. All the holes are clear. I'm going to check this capacitor that I have before I put it on the board with my little peak ESR meter. And yeah, over 24 microfarad is in good shape. ESR looks good for this size capacitor. Plus goes towards me. I'll just go ahead and solder this in and then when the switcher chip gets here, we can put it in as well. Bring over some more of the Amtec 559 flux. There we go. Go ahead and clean this up. Trim our leads. All right, back now. Our switcher chips have come in from DigiKey. As you can see here, it is the 5MO365R, just like we need. These are only a few dollars a piece, but of course shipping is 
at least seven or eight dollars so that's the reason these repairs can add up if it's more than a component or two the components are not that expensive but of course the shipping and handling is and yeah this heat sink was just turned 90 degrees it sure would have been easier to remove this chip i'm gonna put it back in like so get a little thermal pad slide it back in as well get our screw started i need to push this pad in just a little there we go let's snug this up before we solder it that way the leads don't have any stress on them we have already got our cap so when this is done we can try it out so I'm going to put some more Amtec flux on these four pins here and by the way I'll have a link to this down in the description as well as the low melt solder if interested I'm going to use my curved tip soldering iron here sometimes I like using this one in a tight spot There we go. Let's clean up. And that's what we look like. Let's connect it back up and see how it does. Our hot and our neutral. Let's turn this around so we can see a little better and possibly test it. And there we go. There's the AC power. And across this cap here, to know all the input circuit is good, we can just check this cap voltage. And I can show you here on the top of the board between these two jumpers here and here, we should get 160, yeah, 166 volts. So that's the voltage on that cap and getting to the switcher chip. Now across this 30K ohm resistor, we're going to our switching transformer and our voltage is pulsing here. So when that voltage is pulsing up, that's current. So let me take it out of auto range and yeah, yeah, just double check 166 volts. And then out of auto range, we go across here. We see it bumping up. Let's put it on min max and look at the max voltage because it is a pretty quick pulse. Yeah, we're getting 50, over 50 volts. So we might have something else on the board that's shorter that's doing that. So let's check over here on the actual five volt regulator and go back to max reading on the input to this five volt regulator. And yeah, coming out of that pulse transformer, yeah, we should have like 13 volts and it's just pulsing up to 5.3. So let's get the infrared camera and take a look. And we definitely got a hot spot on the back of the board. That's going to be one of those motor driver chips. And yeah, the hot spot showing just to the left of the chip, but my parallax is actually off that much. It's showing that chip just to the right of that hot spot. So yeah, we at least got some of the motor driver chips getting hot. So if we disconnect the power, get out of max mode, you can either hold the max button down or just switch it. I usually just switch it. It's quicker. Yeah, we're down to like 20 volts, so we're good. Go ahead and flip it over. Yep, and these are the chips right here. I'll put a little information up here on the screen. Looks like 6287. It's kind of hard to read these chips, but that looks right. I'm going to put some flux on here and get the hot air. I'm probably going to go ahead and remove both of them just to be safe, because we probably have more than one issue. Just making sure I got the solder good and soft, because I definitely have to break the can form a coating off to get the chip off like so and now the second one and there we go now back now powered up and those have been removed and input to the 5 volt regulator the ground we're still having some problems and we're 
bumping up the 20 something volts and shutting down. So yeah, let's look at the feedback circuit. I'm going to try to get on the feedback pins here and let you see the meter. Yeah, it's nothing. Then it bumps to like four volts. So we definitely have something going on with the feedback circuit. And either it's this little isolator chip right here, the little white one, or something else possibly loading the circuit down. So it could be in this area here, more likely the feedback chip. So before ordering parts, I did talk to the owner. So he mentioned his board did come in today. So he's not that interested in going any further with this one at this point because he was just concerned the board wouldn't come in before Thanksgiving and it has. So we're going to stop on this one right here for that reason. I will mention that I did swap out the electrolytic cap for the switcher uh, just to make sure it wasn't something going on with the one I put in, even though it tested fine. So I did just swap that out and test it again and it was the same thing. So I hope you found this video helpful today. I do want to mention a few other spots that I found help and information while troubleshooting this. And the first one was Grace Appliance. If you hadn't checked out their YouTube channel, check out Grace Appliance. They were really good about showing a different model GE and a different model board. But I believe it's probably a newer board or a board with more options on it. But he does do a good job going through and as far as talking about troubleshooting it since I didn't have any drawings. I did find it helpful, so check them out. And I also found appliantology.org very helpful. Um, I think on that same board that Grace Appliance showed, or at least it's very similar. So the, the pinouts were not perfect, but all on the left side is very close. As far as the input power and all is very similar, but this does look like an updated board, but still more information than I found on the one that I had. So I thought you might find this helpful as well. Even notice that they have taken the switcher chip and turned it like I was talking about earlier. They have turned it to make it a little easier to remove that. So that's awesome. So if you found the video helpful today, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to have a link in the video description of some tools and other helpful items like the low melt solder and the Amtec Flux down in the video description. Any of those links that you click on are affiliate links and they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So I hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks so much for watching and God bless.